Two things influenced this shakedown. I spent the beginning of the week with Ford on track at Laguna Seca with their 2012 Boss 302 Mustang, a great example of the blend of race cars and street cars. That Ford was not another throwback car. Where the original Boss used the street car to deliver the engine to make the race car this time, racing tech was pushed into the road car to make that thing fly. We'll have the full story of the Boss 302 and the Laguna Seca edition in a future FLD tours. Then, to manage the six-hour New York to California flight, and to protect me from the disjointed but automotively intriguing ramblings of travel mate Mike Spinelli, I picked up an issue of Motorsport magazine. In it were articles that also inspired this show, how F1 racing technology is relevant to road cars, and the story of the golden age of F1 innovation, the 70s and 80s, where everything that is now fundamental to racing and street performance came to be. Those years did a lot to inspire me to become a racing fan, so with credit to Motorsport Mag, I thought I'd share the info with you and see if it perks up your passion. Yes, the Indy 500 gave us the first rear view mirror, but the heavy duty advances in auto technology have been developed in F1. Low rolling resistant tires, four valve heads, overhead cams, fuel injection, high rev engines, sequential paddle shifts, computer controlled suspensions, traction control, launch control, carbon fiber, advanced metallurgy, and more. It all came from Formula One, which is why dumbing down the F1 tech rules is dumb for racing and the auto industry. In the 1970s and early 80s, F1 rules were more fluid. Tech innovations were frankly more trial and error, but oh my God, let me share with you what all was going on and what it spawned. Everything I'm about to show you set the path for everything that is still in use today that gives us great race cars and street cars. The February 2011 Motorsport Mag article went in chronological order, taking us from 1970 and the torsion bar suspended aero wedged Lotus 72 to 1982 Brabham BT52 with its computer controlled BMW Turbo 4. But here, let's cover the innovation high points in technology order. Two major advances are paying big dividends right now in engine design. In 1977, Renault started the turbo revolution. Yes, I told you in an earlier shakedown about the 1971 Porsche Can-Am 917, but it was F1 that made breakthroughs in throttle response and efficiency. Then in 1981 and in 1982, Bosch Motronic brought electronic engine management to the party with the Brabham BMW Turbo 4. Now we had control to create power and efficiency and to protect engine longevity. Motronic made that little four-cylinder work and not the rumored engineers pissing on used BMW engine blocks to acid harden the metal for the 1300 horsepower loads. Car weight also came under scrutiny during the 70s and 80s. The first ever carbon tub of the 1980 McLaren reduced weight, but equally big gains came from weight position management. The 1973 Brabham explored the benefits of low weight centers with their pyramid chassis. The 1974 Ferrari showed weight distribution mattered, moving the driver forward but sacrificing foot safety for speed. Right focus, cruel solution. Ferrari then debuted the transverse gearbox, putting mass within the wheelbase, and Porsche 911 engineers scoffed at the Italians on that one. Tire tech had three profound leaps. 1971 racing slicks, which forced better development of rain tire technology. And in 1978, Michelin did its radial tire thing. Most of what we know about aerodynamics came from the F1 70s and 80s. Drag and downforce were defined and controlled. 1970 and 71 marches showed up with wing-shaped side pods. The 1973 Shadow was an early leader in using the wind tunnel. The McLarens at the time weren't, still designed only by hand and educated guests. The 1974 BT44 Brabham launched skirts to reduce the air under the car. Then Lotus took us into ground effects with their 1977 wing cars. But Lotus engineer Peter Wright maybe started his work even earlier when he was at BRM, as evidenced by this 1968 tunnel model. By 1978, we had the Lotus 79 and the Brabham fan car. Lotus plan response? Fans at each corner of the car. The four fans automatically turning on only when approaching a turn. Okay, not everything F1 ended up in road cars. For 1979, Arrows and Lotus tried wingless cars using all underbody ground effects. Arrows, with its A2, even tilted the engine for more underbody airspace, and Ferrari did the same with its 2010 F10. Wingless cars failed in F1, but the info helped future road cars. F1 advances in handling changed the game forever. 
but drove the rule makers nuts. The 1981 Brabham had a hydro pneumatic suspension that lowered and leveled the car around the track and around the ban on side pod skirts touching the ground. Next were the electronically controlled active suspensions of the late 80s and then into the early 90s via Lotus and Williams. Banned from F1 in 1993, but the knowledge was out of the box and into the road cars. An F1 contribution not to be understated is computers. 1974, Goodyear black boxes for handling analysis. Truthfully, it was first tried in 1966 with Ford GT. In 1975, back in F1, computer designed suspension geometries. 1978, Tyrrell with onboard data logging. 1980, Tyrrell again with its 010, the first computer designed F1 car. And this is the F1 age when engineers started writing computer programs to understand airflow, the beginnings of CFD. Nixon, first carbon brakes on the 1976 Brabham, exotic differentials to manage power down and corner exit understeer, a lot like the Torsen diff on the 2012 Boss 302 Mustang that proved its worth when I pounded around Laguna Seca. All that we described today came from 1970s, 80s F1 innovation. And the final punchline, what also came from that age via the March and Fittipaldi teams? A young talent named Adrian Newey. And if you don't know, Google up his name to find out what he's done. Saw the Senna movie. The story of Ayrton's take no prisoners push past 10 tenths every lap. But it would be hard pressed to ignore that technology influenced his passing. Senna chased best tech to Williams, just when the rules outlawed active suspension. Dealing with the new rules pushed drivers to a new limit and may have bit Senna despite his awesome talents. Mm -hmm.